How hard is it to learn a new language, really? I'm Jamie, I'm a language coach. Let's talk about what makes languages hard to learn and what you can do instead. And keep watching because at the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you the one thing that doesn't make language learning harder that most people think does. The first thing to know about how hard any language is gonna be for you to learn is how closely related your target language is to your native language or any other languages that you know. And this can be influenced by two different things. The first thing is to be aware of language trees. Now, if you're not familiar, about the concept of language families and language trees, the basic idea is that there are three major language families that encompass every single language in the world. So for example, if your native language is English, English is on the Indo-European family tree. So if you look at the Indo-European family tree, there are dozens of languages. Any one of those languages will be easier for you to learn than any languages on the other two language family trees. You might also be familiar with the concept of Romance languages, Asian languages, Germanic languages. These are all similar concepts. The basic idea is if you're familiar with a Romance language already, then any other Romance language is gonna be a lot easier for you to learn than like an Asian language. Because if your native language and your target language come from the same language family tree, then they all come from the same original language. And where language families are concerned, they're just like human families. Just like you come from the same genetics and the same DNA as your great, 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 great grandparents, modern day languages also have the same DNA and the same genetics as their original great, 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 great grandparent languages. So if they're connected like that, they'll be easier to learn. And then the second thing that goes into how closely related two languages are is historically. Even if two languages are on completely different family trees and so theoretically would be very, very different, we've had thousands of years of history where different countries have invaded other countries and so the invaders have brought their language into this new land and it gets real, real messy and you know this if you're into history. But if you're not that into history, just know that throughout our history, English and Spanish, those cultures, those countries, have taken over so much of the world that a lot of the world still speaks those languages. And even if those places still speak their native language that they spoke before the English or the Spaniards came over, there's gonna be a lot of English or Spanish words in those languages. For example, the language that they speak in the Philippines, Tagalog, is an Asian language, but it has a lot of Spanish in it because the Spaniards lived in the Philippines for like 400 years. So if you're familiar with Spanish, you're gonna be familiar with a lot of Tagalog words, just because historically that's how things happened. The next thing to keep in mind about how hard it is to learn a language is how common that language really is. While it's really awesome to learn languages that are a lot less commonly learned, it does make it a lot more difficult to find resources and to find ways to practice and learn those languages. So for example, if you wanna learn something like Spanish or French or German, you're gonna find tons and tons and tons of resources, not only in different language apps and courses, but also right here on YouTube. It's easy enough to just search Spanish, French, or German phrases right into YouTube and find people who speak those languages natively and learn from them. And like most any app will carry at least Spanish. Meanwhile, if you wanna learn something like Bosnian, it's gonna be a lot harder to find that kind of content here on YouTube, as well as on different apps. Now, if you wanna find those language apps for learning less commonly learned languages, there are some apps that are really, really great about supporting these languages. For example, Utalk and Drops both support Bosnian. Now, if you don't like those resources, you don't enjoy those apps, and they're not getting you where you need to go, then it becomes another obstacle and you have to work really, really hard to learn that language. The next thing that's gonna affect how hard it is to learn a new language is your own expectations. I see this happen all the time where people want to learn a new language, but what they expect language learning to look like isn't realistic. And so inevitably they find themselves unable to learn the language because it doesn't really pan out the way that they wanted it to. Specifically, it's really common for people to have a lot of energy and excitement and motivation at first, but then as they keep going through their language learning, that motivation dies. And so when they lose that motivation, they don't know how to keep going. This is such a huge problem that I have an entire mini course all about how to help language learners keep their motivation up even when that initial excitement dies. It's called Mastering Motivation. You can find the link below in the description box. But when you're expecting your language learning to go a certain way, and it never does, 
ever. That's like the rule of language learning. So many people struggle so hard and find language learning so difficult just because they don't know how to keep moving forward. As opposed to having reasonable expectations and giving yourself the grace to kind of not be as fast and quick as you want to be, then language learning is really, really difficult and a lot of people are not successful. The next thing that affects how hard it is to learn a language is your language learning strategy. How are you learning the language? While any exposure to your target language is good exposure, what holds the most people back is not knowing how to learn the language. And this can be just as bad for people learning more commonly learned languages and less commonly learned languages. Because with languages like Spanish or French or German, there are so many resources available, they don't know how to pick the one that will work for them and how to stick to it. And of course, with the less commonly learned languages, they don't know what their options are. And even if they do know the options, they don't know how to stick to it themselves. And that's exactly why I teach my clients exactly how to learn a language for themselves when they join the method. Because that's exactly what made language learning so hard for me for over a decade. Even though I wanted to learn Spanish, which is so easy to find content for, I was still unable to just stick to it long enough to feel confident in my abilities to learn and speak Spanish. The fastest, easiest way to learn any language is to know exactly how you want to learn the language and how to stick to it long term. And as promised at the beginning of this video, the one thing that people think makes it hard to learn a new language but really doesn't is their age. It is so unbelievably common for people to think that being older makes it more difficult to learn a language, but that's really not true. And that's why I have an entire YouTube video all about this and a few other really, really common myths that are not accurate and do not make it more difficult to learn a language. And if you don't believe me, head on over to that video and I'll prove it to you. See you there.